Welcome to Working Groups. Uh, this is just going to be a series of quick videos to help take us through the process of maximizing the time with your working groups at different consultations. Um, I'm joined by Bill Sunderland here. My name is John Blake and we're going to dive right on in. This first step is to really define the group. We want to make sure that the group understands who they are. So in this first one, we want to create a positive atmosphere, one where people feel free to speak, free to share, and really have a lot of anticipation of what the Lord could do. The second and, and one of the key things moving forward is to really define the purpose statement. What's going to make this happen? So, uh, Bill, talk to us for just a second. You've come into a lot of these groups. This positive atmosphere, coming out with the purpose statement, why is that important? What have you experienced? Well, generally, when working groups begin to form, it's very important for the facilitator to focus in on developing ownership amongst the participants. And in the consultations, often what happens is you'll have people sitting in on the development of a working group without really feeling like they're integral. So I think it's very important starting out, you know, yes, the positive atmosphere, and really for the facilitator, the person who's developing, leading this group, to enable everyone to share and to talk and to feel like they really own it. Take the time so that they can get that ownership in the purpose statement. Because beyond that, if you don't have that, the people won't hang. They won't stay. They'll fly away, as they say. We've seen that. So here are some of the activities then that, that we've identified in this first session that becomes so important. Introduce the team. Take time to make sure you know the players. Even even in this, uh, Bill, a lot of times these are groups that have been together for a while. What does this look like if they've been together? That's still an important factor. What does it look like in those settings? Well, absolutely. I mean, people need to know one another. They need to know each other on a personal level, aside from a business or ministry level where they're interacting that way. So getting down to what's going on in your personal life and prayer requests in that area is very, very important. And then that begins to help you then get into what is the real objective of why we've come together here, what's our objective in defining that purpose statement. That's great. So once you've established that trust, and really the first step there of that relationship, it's got to be one where people begin to feel comfortable. Pray Thanksgiving over who God has brought. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we just forget and we get moving into, well, we got to do the agenda. Yeah. Pause and just say, man, let's see who God brought, as well as for those that are coming back together, what's God already done? What's, how's he been working? And really just pause. The, the next thing is to discuss the success for the group uh, there's a lot of different creative ways that you can do this. One of our team members, uh, Dave, the way that he likes to do it is to actually say, okay, we're we're five years down the road, and mm -hmm. let's just look back. What has what have we accomplished? What what have we done? And he actually has them put it into the past tense. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we've done this, and and we've had this experience, and and it just forces you to think in a real proactive manner. Um, in your experience, this this fourth point here, distill to a purpose statement, taking all of these items of success, what's been an example or what's been one place where you've really seen that happen well that you've distilled down? Well, again, that's, you know, the purpose statement is really, in, in my words, is a vision statement for the working group. So in the partnership or network, you have an overarching vision, which everybody buys into. Then in the working group, you get into more of the specifics where you're really bringing together various partners or ministries who have a particular defined objective that they're trying to reach. So yes, looking at that gap between where we want to be five years from now and where we are today, and then figuring out, you know, eventually in these other uh, videos, we're going to go into that process, but figuring out how am I going to get from where I am today to where I want to be in five years, and really then having this purpose statement that everybody in the working group now, everybody in the working group buys into that purpose statement. In your experience, you know, this is the fourth point in, in most meeting agendas. We get to the end of it and we drop off. We don't really get enough time for the last one. Mm -hmm. How much time is this going to take? I mean, if we're saying these meetings are an hour to an hour and a half, distilling from what we've 
set as success to now getting to a statement, how much time do we need to allot for that? Well, uh, don't rush it. So if you can do it in an hour, great. Uh, generally, what I've seen is that these are multiple meetings within the network meeting that maybe would take up to three to four hours of time. That should be sufficient. If you don't have that amount of time, then it's got to it's got to begin to develop over the length of time between consultations. Mm. So I, I want to talk about this as per a statement, since it becomes the foundation for your working group, um, wh what is it? It's a brief consensus statement of greatest measurable impact from success. That sounds really wordy and really big. You, you've already articulated it, Bill. It's, it's the vision statement for your group. It's saying in the next 12 to 18 months, this is what we want to see accomplished. This is how we'll know that we've been successful. And it's so important that they really own this statement, that it is one where they truly feel that they've come together in its writing, uh, that they feel that they have something measurable. If, if we're a church planning working group, then maybe it's X in the number of new churches being planted um, in a certain region or a certain time. But making sure that it's something that is truly uh, exciting, because we said that positive atmosphere at the beginning, so critical um, in this. So as we look at this and as we think through this first step of defining the group, keep the positive atmosphere, get the excitement built, which is hopefully with that looking at success and then bringing this purpose statement that will all of a sudden bring people together, give them the excitement, the, the, uh, the intentionality of being on the same page, and also the, the idea of just like in this little picture where these people all have their own piece, they're, they're ready to try to put theirs in there. They're trying to see how they can fit because they believe in finishing what the puzzle set out to do. Uh, so number one, define the group. Thanks for your time.